Okay, we're going to ramp it up and give you some harder problems to solve using elimination. But before we do that, I would like you to look at this system. Notice that my first equation, the x and the y term, are both on the same side of the equal sign. But on the second equation, the x term is on one side of the equal sign and the y term is on the other. In order to use elimination, both the x's and the y's must be in the same spot in each equation. The equations have to appear the same. So at first you're thinking, well, I can't use elimination, but actually I can easily rewrite the second equation. So I'm just going to move my first equation over, and then I'm going to move the 16y to the other side of the equal sign, and I have to do that using an inverse operation. I can't just move something willy-nilly across an equal sign. So this is going to give me negative 16y plus 3x equals negative 33. And when I do that, I can see that I have opposites. So all I have to do is add the two equations together to solve them. That gives me y equals 33, and then I take, or excuse me, not 33, 3, and then I take this y value, and I'm going to plug it into one of my original equations, and this particular one, I'm going to plug it in right where the second equation. So I'm going to say 3x equals 16 times 3. minus 33. And I'm going to solve that. And I get that x equals 5. So remember, you can always rewrite an equation so both of the equations are similar before you start with elimination. Alright, so what if we have an equation like this? Notice that none of the coefficients in this system are the same or opposite. Um, and remember, our goal is to create opposites to get rid of one of our variables. So if I have something like this, that's no problem. I can multiply one or both of the equations to create opposites. And then I'm going to use the same process, add the equations and solve for the other variable. So let's look at this. And what I'm going to do is look at my x terms first. And I'm going to say, hey, will one of these coefficients go evenly into the other. And yeah, 2 will go evenly into 6 three times. So I could multiply my bottom equation by negative 3. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and move over my top equation. Remember, organization is huge in math. And then I'm going to multiply everything in the bottom equation by negative 3. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x, and as you can see, I have now created my opposite. Negative 3 times 3y is negative 9y, and negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Now that I have opposites, I know how to solve this equation by adding them together. And I get that y equals negative 1. Now I'm going to take that negative 1 and plug it back into one of my equations, my original equations. And it doesn't matter which one. So I think I'm just going to put it right there. And that is going to give me two x minus three equals five. And this is a two-step equation you know how to solve. And when I do, I get that x equals 4. So in this one, instead of multiplying by negative 1, I figured out that if I multiplied by negative 3, I could create an opposite. All right, let's try one more. What if I have something like this? Okay, again, I'm going to look at my x values, the coefficients, and I've got a 4 and a negative 3. Well, negative 3 won't go into 4. Now, they're opposites, but they're not uh, the same number. All right, so let's look at my y values. I have one's negative and one's positive, so they're opposites, but they're not the 
same number, and 3 will not go evenly into 8. So I've got to think a little bit harder about how I'm going to create an opposite. Well, I know that 3 and 4 will go evenly into the number 12. So if I multiply everything on the top by positive 3, I should get 12x minus 9y equals 75. And if I multiply everything on the bottom by positive 4, I'm going to get negative 12x plus 32y equals 40. Now, as you can see, I have created an opposite, 12x and negative 12x, which is exactly what I wanted. And now I have a system I know how to solve by adding them together. My uh, x terms are eliminated. I get 23y equals 115. And when I solve for y, I get that y equals 5. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my template put 5 there for y, and now I just have to figure out what x is. So I'm going to take this y value, and I'm going to put it up into, oh, let's just put it up there. And I'm going to get 4x minus 15 equals 25. This is a two-step equation I know how to solve. And when I do, I get x equals 10. So the solution to this system is x equals 10, y equals 5. All right, so again, let's just go back. I looked at my coefficients, and I had to create opposites. I did that by multiplying one equation by 3 and another equation by 4 to get 12x and negative 12x so that my x terms would be eliminated. Okay, now that we know how to solve a system of equations, let's see how we might use this in real life. We're going to look at a word problem where we are combining two things. This is going to be similar to the problems that you've seen in the past where a person has nickels and dimes in their pocket and they have so many dollars and so many items. How many of each do they have? This is the same sort of thing except here I'm going to have books and dishes. A person has a collection of antique books and antique dishes to sell. The collection has 42 items in it. A buyer plans to purchase the collection for $980. The buyer will pay $20 per book and $40 per dish. Let X be the number of antique books. Let Y be the number of antique dishes. Write a linear system of equations. Solve your system to determine the number of antique books and antique dishes in the collection. All right, so they want us to write a system and then solve that system. So let's go back up to our problem. I've got two things I'm combining, books and dishes, and they tell me that the collection has 42 items in it. Well, they want me to use X as the antique books because I don't know how many books I have and they want me to use y as the number of antique dishes. Well, I don't know how many books I have, and I don't know how many dishes, but if I add those two together, I have to have the total number of items in the collection, which is 42. So this is the first equation of my system. Now notice that it's just x plus y equals 42. There are no dollars in this equation. It's all just number of items. Now, let's go back up and look at the dollars. A buyer plans to purchase a collection for $980. So that's the total number of dollars that I, come, that I need to come up with. Now, the buyer is going to pay $20 per book. And we know that books are X. So I don't know how many books I have, but each one is $20. And I would represent that as 20 times X. And I don't know how many dishes I have, but it says that it's $40 per dish, so each dish is $40. I would represent that as 40 times Y. 
Now, I'm gonna take the dollars from my dishes and the dollars from my books. If I add that together, it has to give me $980. So this is my system of equations. X plus Y equals 42 and 20X plus 40Y equals $980. Now I'm gonna write it down here where I have some working room. And I'm gonna use elimination to solve this with. So I could either eliminate my X or my Y, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to eliminate my X since that's my smaller number. So I must multiply everything in that first equation by negative 20 so that I can get X values or X terms that will cancel each other out or eliminate each other. When I do that, I get negative 20X plus negative 20Y equals negative $840. And then I'm just gonna write my other equation right under that, and I'm gonna add them together. Now notice that my X terms go away. They are eliminated, which is exactly what I wanted. When I add the Y terms, I get 20Y, and when I add the constants, I get 140. So 20Y equals 140, I'm gonna solve that, and I get that Y equals seven. Now remember that Y represents antique dishes. So now I know there are seven antique dishes in the collection. So to find out the number of books, I'm gonna use my very first equation up there, X plus Y equals 42, and instead of Y, I'm gonna put in seven. And then I'm gonna solve that, and I'm going to get X, which represents my number of books, is 35. So I have 35 antique books in my collection. There's going to be a question like this on the unit test. Remember, when you are combining two things, you can set up a system of equations to solve them, and then you can use elimination. Your notebook as your independent practice. Please pause your video, work these problems, and then you can come back and check your work. Okay, I got the solution, negative seven, negative one, for my first independent practice. And you can check your work against mine. I multiplied my first equation by negative two to create a negative 10x, and my second equation by positive five to create a positive 10x. All right, now check your next solution. I got two negative five for the second independent practice. I created an opposites of the y's by multiplying the top equation by four. And that gave me a negative four y, and then I already had a positive four y in the second equation. All right, I think you're ready for your teacher talk or working on your homework.